What was the civil rights movement? The easy answer, and like most easy answers, the wrong one, is that it was a movement to secure the rights of American citizens for black Americans. Clearly it was that, but it was much, much more. The struggle that the black community and its allies waged, as we call the civil rights movement, deepened the currents of American democracy for all Americans. None of the entitlements and rights that generations of immigrants coming to this country since enjoy. All of them were struggled for and won by the struggle of black Americans. The rights of women was a direct consequence of the civil rights movement. The rights of minorities, people with disabilities, and so forth and so on. So that the civil rights movement was not simply a struggle for black rights, though that was at the apex of it, but it was a struggle for the democratic rights of all Americans and an enrichment of the democratic heritage of this country. So far as this specific accomplishment, the civil rights movement, the nonviolent direct action civil rights movement of the South, which is why we're really at the when we talk about the civil rights movement, achieved its legislative agenda with the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which interestingly enough didn't include, include anything about voting, so we had to go back to the well one more time and get the Voting Rights Act of 1965 after the Selma March. With that, and with all the elements included in the Civil Rights Act, housing, education, etc., etc. The infrastructure of American apartheid, white supremacy and Jim Crow was destroyed in the country. The democratic process was opened up. And with the coming of the Black Power movement, the black community was encouraged to get involved into the political process black congressmen, black mayors, black so-and-so. The civil rights movement accomplished, didn't integrate the country as we discussed before, but it accomplished a great many things. It opened up opportunity in education to, um, to black and minority communities. So in a remarkably short period of time, you saw generals emerge and head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. You saw the CEOs first of branches, departments, of Fortune 500 companies than of actually Fortune 500 companies. And you have a black president. So all those things are extremely dramatic changes. But for the masses of black people who still have subject to inferior education, who are still the victims of legal and police discrimination across the nation. So there's a great deal of change and there's a great deal that is intractable that has become worse. The unity of 22 million so-called Negroes up from slavery is the answer to our salvation. We are suffering untold torture and murder at the hands of our enemies because of the lack of unity. The cause of this lack of unity among us is due to the work and teaching of our enemies, the slave master's children. The slave master's children have, re have reared our fathers and mothers to be enemies of each other. They have destroyed our love of self and kind. They have educated us to hate and refuse all that goes for black people. The lack of love for self and kind keeps us divided and being divided, we are a nation of prey at the hands of our ever open enemies. Whatever the amount of education we receive from our enemies, we are still the slaves of our enemies due to the lack of knowledge of self, God, and the devil. The true religion, self-pride, self-interest, and self-independence, and the desire of a country and of a government of our own under the law of justice and righteousness for every one of our people, black people, and throughout the earth. But let us start first here in America, where we are the victims of no freedom, justice, and equality, and we know the pains of being divided. Welcome back. Happy Monday. Welcome back to On the Shoulders of Giants. I'm Joseph Ward, and we're continuing our reading of Elijah Muhammad's message to the black man in America. And this chapter is land of our own and qualifications, the unity of 22 million. Land of our own and qualifications, the unity of 22 million from pages 220 to 247. 
So pages 220, 247, started in the first paragraph. So for us to get to the ideal place that I think a number of us believe we should be, I agree with what Elijah Muhammad is saying. We need our own independence, but our independence comes from our unification. Now, I'm pairing this with the video of the gentleman talking about civil rights. Because I've been having conversations with people for the last couple of weeks about, you know, trying to get people to think about the difference between fighting for civil rights and black rights specifically. I was at an event weeks ago and uh, we were sitting at tables and we had a couple of our lobbyists and politicians come by and talk to us about specific things that they're advocating for. And it was interesting that every person was fighting for something for a specific group, except the black person. The woman was fighting for specific abortion rights. You had one man fighting for specific LGBTQ rights. Somebody's fighting specifically for elder rights. Somebody fighting for rights for immigrants. But the black person was fighting for civil rights. And then my question was, well, why are we, in 2024, with access to all of the information that we have, to see what worked and what didn't work. Why are we still fighting for civil rights in 2024 rather than the rights of black people in America, Foundation of Black America, Adolf, whatever you want to call yourself, the black people in America who are the descendants of slaves in America? Why aren't we fighting for our specific rights whether, rather than continuing to fight under the umbrella of civil rights? Who the hell is civil? Fighting for, as the gentleman said in the opening video, fighting for civil rights is not just fighting for the rights of black people, it's fighting for democratic rights. But there's no democratic rights in a system where one group of people have the power. That's not democracy. It's not. So civil rights is a glorified hot mess. Let's just call it what it is. Civil rights is a glorified hot mess. And the the way the history is being told, it's it's distorted the way we even think about freeing ourselves. I'm having a conversation with a young lady that I work with, and we were she brought up this uh, situation with the interview with Shannon Sharp and Monique, and some of the things Monique was talking about, and she was complaining about Hollywood and Netflix and people not paying her her worth. So, you know, the conversation many young ladies having, it, and I'm like. But aren't you ain't tired of Monique just complaining about a group of people that's not going to give her what she feels like she needs, what or she deserves? Like they're not going to give it to her. The only way she came close to getting that, she had to go and sue, and they settled, and they didn't settle because they agreed with her. They settled to get her out of their hair. And so, but why are we begging people to give us the what we believe we deserve rather than going to get it for ourselves? And, and in a separate conversation with the young lady, I agree with what she said. We don't want to work for it. We don't want to work for our own salvation. That's a damn problem. Somebody, is, we, we believe somebody is supposed to give us our freedom. Somebody is supposed to give us our liberation. We're not supposed to work for it. We're not supposed to gain our own. We're not supposed to build our own. It's supposed to come ready made. Well, show me. Where in history has any group of people who were under the thumb of another group of people, their salvation or their freedom, their liberation, were just given to them by the people who they were under the thumb of? Where did that? Where has that happened in in history? And I know um, I know the people who watch this. I know y'all know history, but for other people who you don't know like we don't even want to know our own history so we, we don't even know any history so we make up shit based off of how we feel and that's the ignorant part and the frustrating part about what we do we refuse to learn our own history we refuse to learn world history we have no idea of how the world actually works and then we make up shit based off of what we feel out of the ignorance that comes from us because we want people to treat us right and the same, the earlier conversation with the young lady, 
um, when we're talking about Monique, she brought up the civil rights movement as an example of what we should do. And it's like, well, we can we can all agree that we didn't gain much from the civil rights movement. The only thing we gained was access to white stuff to make them richer. So look around. I told look around you in this city where we are. This community that we're in was a bustling black community 50, 100 years ago. It was a bustling black community. Now look at it. It's a dilapidated, cracked out, drug infested, prostitute infested, infested, crime riddled community. We gave up everything we had to be a part of white people's stuff. And then we're begging white people to give us what we need. Think about that. We gave up our own to be a part of white people's stuff just to come back and beg white people to give us the stuff that we gave up. That's crazy as hell. But I digress. Let's go ahead and get back into it. So page 280, I mean 220, this, the bottom paragraph, page 220. At present, we have hundreds of clubs and organizations, thousands of teachers, hundreds of educators, scholars, scientists, technicians, doctors, lawyers, judges, congressmen, ambassadors, professors, tradesmen of all kinds of engineers of most every kind. We have all kinds of religious believers, teachers, preachers by the thousands, agriculturalists, herdsmen and cat and cattlemen and fishermen and hundreds of hundreds of wild game. What more do we need but unity of the whole for the whole? What more do we need? Of all these skilled people, all these people educated in, in vastly different things that we can work together, but we choose not to. What actually is preventing the unity of 22 million? Of course, today is 40 million. I saw somebody in the comments tomorrow. It's 40 million. I'm reading a book. I'm reading a book that was written in the 70s, that was published in the 70s. I'm reading a book, and the book it says 22 million. Use some common sense. We know it's 40 million now. I'm reading the book. All right, but anyway, what more do we need but unity of the whole for the whole? What actually is preventing this unity of 22 million or more of us in the ignorance and foolish love and fear of our enemies in the professional and leadership class of the nation of 22 million black people up from slavery? These are disgraceful Uncle Toms in the world of freedom, learning and advanced science in every branch of study. How long shall we seek the white man's education to become their servants instead of becoming builders of a progressive nation of our own, of some of this earth that we can call our own? Why are you so foolish to think it cannot be done? I have Allah and the world of the righteous on my side to accomplish this. Our own, our only our ignorant outlook upon how we exist is keeping us from uniting. But it also goes back to what Elijah Muhammad said earlier. It's the it's also doing part to the conditioning, the programming that we've received from the slave masters, from the white society. They program us to be enemies of ourselves. So we're trying to work through that, get over that, power through it. We don't have to see ourselves as enemies. It's the perception. We can change our perception. We can change our lens. We can change the channel. This is a part of it. A part. That's why we do these book reviews. That's why we have these conversations. So we can help to change our mind, change the program and change the perception. In order for the programming to be changed, new information has to be poured in. That's why we do what we do. So how can we unite? So you say that we cannot unite and produce our own necessities. We are 22 million or more people depending upon the white American citizens to produce food, clothes, shelter, transportation, unemployment, and our educational training. And if they do not share equally with us, we charge them with discriminating. Some of us will go to the extreme of disgracing ourselves and trying to force the white American citizens to give equal respect. The love of self and American citizens, I mean, excuse me, the love of self and self-respect along with the will to do something for self is given if given a chance will give you the respect of all citizens it's earned wealth freedom respect love power is earned it's not given it's earned wake the hell up i don't know what world we're living in why we keep telling ourselves this dumb stuff 
that's never worked, wake the hell up. We have to earn our freedom. We have to earn the respect. We have to earn our place in the world. And right now we've done nothing to earn it. You cannot beg your way to freedom. You cannot ashamed your way to freedom. You cannot make spread awareness to freedom. You cannot protest and march to freedom. It's deeper than that. You know where I'm going. You know where I'm going. And if you don't know where I'm going, you need to keep studying. It is a shame and disgrace to the intelligence of any people to lie at the feet and doorsteps of another nation, asking, praying to be cared for, love and unity of self and kind is the key to our salvation. It's on us. <clears throat> if you say we cannot unite, you are wrong. And you native. We can unite before your very eyes. You see the brothers of Allah and <clears throat> his religion, Islam, uniting this divine power from Allah working among, the, among us, uniting us into a nation of brotherly love. This approves the lives of that old saying that the Negroes cannot unite. I agree with you who are in the Christian churches, lovers and followers of white Christians, that you cannot enjoy love and unity among yourselves. The basic aim and purposes of the religion Christianity was to deceive other races, namely the black, brown, yellow and red to make an easy prey for the white race. But today you and I both see the powerless forces of Christianity unable to bring about the peace among those who profess it. Since Christian Europe and America cannot bring peace to their troubled world with all their satellite nations as helpers, what kind of peace can they make for us? Great question. Their religion divides one against the other. This I am sure we can all agree upon. We must know self and gain self-respect. This will remove that old slave idea to the so-called Negroes cannot unite and build an independent nation on some of this good earth that we can call our own. Stop looking for others to help you in that which you can help yourself. The white man has made the black man lazy and that he may rule and enslave him by producing and selling to him that which he can produce himself. I'm going to read that again. The white man has made the black man lazy that he may rule and enslave him by producing and selling him that which he can produce himself. But the white man knows that he has destroyed the black man's unity. And as long as the black man thinks he cannot love and unite with black, the white man knows that he has a permanent slave as long as we act like we can't get together we're gonna be permanent slaves come and let us unite under the crescent and do something for ourselves in the way of supporting our own needs go after some of this earth for our nation of 22 million here in north america if it cannot be had here there's plenty of earth elsewhere now I would disagree with him by saying uniting under the crescent i would say unite under a code of conduct United under a code of conduct, which means that we're not led by or bound by a religion. We're bound by duty as a people. So whatever your religion is, it is what it is. We don't we're not uh, stopping you. Well, we're not going to not unite with you because you believe in something different as far as religion wise. What is your code of conduct? What is the code of conduct that we are united upon? What are we bonded under? That's why I would disagree with him on that is uniting under that code, not necessarily the religion. I understand how he feels and he sees and he believes the religion should be used. And he believes that the religion will lead to our salvation. However, in 2024, we have enough evidence to understand that what he was saying here, all of it did not necessarily pan out the way that he said it would in this book. So therefore, Let's not unite under a religion, rather unite under a code of conduct. And uh, I remember seeing the conduct, uh, comment, even though we've showed the code of conduct we've came up with various times, plenty of times on this channel. Somebody said, well, you keep talking about a code of conduct. Well, show us your code of conduct. Go to the, T-H-E, the P-A-C-T-S-I-N-C dot org. T-H-E, P-A-C-T-S-I-N-C dot org and you will be able to um see what we're talking about in our code of conduct 
So, of land and a nation. What we must understand today is the importance of acquiring land of our own. We are no longer a mere help, a mere handful of people. We are a little better than 22 million and the population is still increasing. Nowadays, we're 40 million. We cannot forever continue to depend upon America to give us a job, send us to school, build our houses and sell us her food and give us nothing in return. America was not established and chartered with constitutional guarantees for the black man, but for the white man. America was not founded to guarantee the freedoms and equality of the black man and woman, and indeed she is not seeking to grant these privileges to our people today. In what other country on this earth will you find 22 million people with the framework of another people's government seeking to become qualified citizens joyously singing the song of integration? Our people are the fools of the nation. Integration means self-destruction, and the means to this end it is exactly that death and nothing less the black people throughout the earth are seeking independence for their own not integration into white society what do we look like trying to integrate with our 400 year old enemies the average so-called negro wants to change his own flesh color and blood for a strange blood and flesh in order to build a nation you must first have some land from our first generation of slaves to the present generation of our people we have been unable to unite and acquire some land of our own due to the mental poisoning of our former slave masters who destroyed in us the desire to think and do for self and kind. We had land and they took it. And they're still taking it because we are not in a position to protect our land because we are you. We are not united and a disjointed group of people will always be vulnerable to their enemy. But hey, you know, all you rugged individual Negroes who out there just getting on your own, taking care of yourself, hey, don't call us when the whites come knocking. When the white supremacists come knocking, don't call us. When your stuff get taken, when you become even more victimized, don't call for the black, for the, for the whole of black people then. Nah, don't do that then. We either going to fight together or we going to lose together separately together together but separately but separately together so he goes on to say do do you as educated and professional men and women desire to be recognized forever as the mental slaves back and the mental slaves and beggars of the white america and that's a great question that's why I, that's why i marked that i am an educated and professional person in america and i am so aggravated I'm so aggravated looking at other black educated and professional people who just want their seat at the white man's table. Who just want the white supremacists to just love them and cherish them and they're willing to do whatever they need to do to be a part of it. It's irritating. So like Dick Gregory says, when you put on the magic glasses, the magic glasses allow you to see the reality of the world that you live in, right? And when you put on the magic glasses, you can't take them off. James Baldwin talked about this too. When you, when you realize what's going on, you become aware that awareness never goes away. You can't take the magic glasses off. And from there, you become frustrated seeing the conditions of your people and how your people behave within this matrix that we exist in. It's frustrating seeing us behave like slaves when we don't have to. In order to be recognized today, you must represent your nation. We must understand the importance of land to our nation. The first and most important reason that the individual countries of Europe, Asia, and Africa are recognized as nations is because they occupy a specific area of the earth. Second, they are recognized because of the effectiveness of their internal unity and policies and then by their en enactment of international policies and agreements with other established nations. The black man has been actually worthless when it comes to exercising the rights as human beings in an ever advancing civilization. So remember, we cannot demand recognition until we have some land that we call our own. You might argue that 
this is impossible. But I say to you with almighty Allah on my side that that is that this is not only possible, but it is in the working for our people and will manifest itself soon. So now he goes on to talk, you know, expanding more on us having a house of our own land, of our own something that we can occupy this hours that's recognized as ours and respected. Independence to you is strange. You have given up the hope of ever being independent, but this is just what Allah wants for you uh, to do for you. Don't you think it is time after 400 years as servants and strangers, it is hopeless to think that these strangers will ever be other than what they, what they now are to you. Independence We have to see it for ourselves. We have to believe it for ourselves. We have to know it for ourselves. We have to strategize for it. You can't just hope your way into independence. As he keeps reiterating, it's not just going to be served up to us on a silver platter. Our, our status as laborers will not change as far as it will not get better. It would get worse. It will go from laborers to worthless. So at what point are we going to do for self? Because they are no longer going to be carrying us because they don't have to carry us. They have, they have people from other groups, other ethnic groups, other nationalities, other races, and they have technology. So sooner or later, more and more and more of black Americans are going to be what's called the worthless class. Do we have the qualified men and women for self-government? The answer to the above question is yes. We do not have to be equal in knowledge with every nation to be successful in operating our own government. We do not have to be equal in knowledge with every nation to be successful in operating in our own government. Were those whites were, the, were those whites who first came to this country seeking self-government equal to the English parliamentary lords? They were. That's a great point. You don't have to be equal to your enemies to build for yourself. There are probably more independent people who do not have among them many who have the know-how of the American educate, educated class of so-called Negroes. We have enough technicians such as mathematicians, construction engineers, civil engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, physicists, chemists, mechanical engineers, I mean, physicists, chemists, educators, agriculturalists, navigators, and astronauts among the 22 million, 40 million of us now, you will find scholars or scientists whom they can use in every branch of government. Then there are our own independent people outside of this country who would be glad to help get us going in a country or state of ourselves. We do not expect to build, nor do we desire to build a government patterned after the order of the white race. Please don't, please don't, because we just we would just be recreating white supremacy. Naturally, we would need help for the next 30 to 20, for the next 20 to 25 years. After that, we would be self-supporting. The spirit of doing for self is now fast coming into our people. The only they only need a new education of self and others. The spirit of doing for self, that that it needs to happen now. Now, said country, it needs to happen, not now, but right now. Spirit of doing for self. Instead of the spirit of begging, instead of the spirit of expecting, well, ideally, this is what it would be. White people should just help us. White people did this. White people did that. White people should just help us. White people aren't helping us. The white supremacists aren't helping us. Those who are allies are being allies. Those who are not aren't. But we keep begging those who are not allies to be allies. I don't get it. A person will show you who they are through their actions. White people who do, who do not subscribe to white supremacy have shown through their actions why they don't subscribe to white supremacy. There are a lot of white people who we have no idea where they stand because their actions show us. Then there are white people whose actions have blatantly show us that they subscribe to white supremacy. But the ones who we don't know about and the ones who clearly subscribe to white supremacy, we're trying to 
have conversations with them and change them and get them to see the world through our eyes and our lens and just see a whole new better world that we can just be better and just be in harmony because you know it's black history might and remember what martin luther king said it's not about the content of your skin it's not about the color of your skin excuse me it's the content of your character stop it dr king also told us that he feared that he integrated his people into a burning building all right if we're gonna quote king let's quote king fully i don't just quote one speech let's quote all his speeches but let's get our mind right that's why we still in the predicament that we are in because our minds ain't right the programming is still there we must have some of this earth that we can call our own we and our fathers have been robbed of all that we originally possessed and now we are left without anything to use for self like wealth and modern instruments to start a civilization as you have though we have helped you to get what you have we now must have justice in some of this earth and its wealth that we call our own if we don't have our own we ain't talking about nothing and nobody's listening to us nobody's respecting us because they don't have to at some point we're going to get up dust ourselves off and get to work it's not easy becoming independent it's not an easy task becoming free it's not easy building yourselves up to become respected it's not easy it's work stop taking your cues from these hollywood people and begging for your place at a table that don't want you there stop taking your cues from these celebrities and begging for a place at a table that don't want you there in 1898 a devil by the name of lacroix lacroix representing belgium's big business admitted he had eliminated 160 million so-called negro men women and children he also admitted that he had tortured some and eliminated women and children the congo in 1880 belgium estimated a population of 30 million in 1880 the population was 30 million by 1911 the population was reduced to eight and a half million in 1894 an english traveler ej glaive reported 2100 21 heads of black men were brought to stanley falls and used as decoration around a flower bed in one of the homes of a high-ranking army officer missionaries reported that white christians forced the so-called negroes into slavery producing rubber and if the rubber was bad quality the poor black slaves were made to eat the rubber just an example of the atrocities of the people that we keep begging for a place that they take the poor slave after his masters let him go free his first problem to solve was securing a home of his own for the first time he must now do for self master is no longer responsible for him he must solve his own problems he must now realize that he must work hard to be equal of other nations he must also remember that justice and righteousness in his defense and wickedness of his enemies and the downfall of his government and his people he must learn to make friends and protect himself against his enemies. He must learn to make friends and protect himself against his enemies. He must dig into the earth for his rich treasures. He must now seek the friendship of other nations to do business with them and trade product for product. But if the slave is lazy, he will always be the slave of another. No nation respects a beggar. We, the members of the original black nation of the earth, who were once lost from our own kind are supposed to be free it absolutely does not make sense for us to be seeking integration with our slave masters children instead of seeking unity among our own kind think about that we worked harder to be a part of their thing than to get along with each other there is not any earth offered to us as integrating how we can and our own children build an independent nation of this earth without some of it we call our own do we not look ignorant begging white america to accept us as equal members of this society without having one square foot of earth that we can call our own we are like hunter dogs whom the hunter is tired of and whites 
that they will go on go and hunt food for themselves but the poor foolish dog is there wherever his master sits down to eat standing at the door begging with his tongue hanging out and wagging his tail while at the same time he had gone into the woods looking for a meal he would not have had to suffer the hated tricks and curses of his master if you just realized that you were conditioned to be a beggar and a slave if we could reverse that it would help we got to realize where we are but you have to be you got to be put on game too somebody got to put you on game and that's what we're here to do put people on game so we can know what's going on and reverse that I, like i said before if i know what happened to me then i can go about fixing what happened to me from a from a few comes a great nation the lord the Lord God of Islam taught me that in 1555, a devil by the name of John Hawkins or Hopkins of England brought the first of our parents here for slave purposes. We were not to be citizens, not to be represented as humans or to be given equal justice under the American laws. In 300 years of slavery, we were lashed, beaten and eliminated, given no education and reared and cared for like the slave master's stock, you know, the horses and domestic animals. Our children were separated to different plantation owners. For the first time, approximately 100 years of so-called freedom, the so-called Negroes have been subjected to the worst inhumane treatment of any people who have ever lived on earth. They, the devils, have lynched and burned so-called Negroes during the past century as sport for their wives and children to enjoy. Edwin R. Embry states in his book, Brown Americans, page 169, that the burning of Henry Laurie in Arkansas proceeded by inches. Leaves, soap, and gasoline were heaped about in small bundles so that the torture would be dragged out. Ralph Roddy, a reporter, described the entire orgy of the Memphis press of January 27, 1921. He was able to cover the story because plans for the lynching had been made well in advance. The newspapers were notified to be ready to issue the extras. When Henry Smith was burned at the stake in Texas, ex excursion trains were ran from the event. Many people and children were in the throng, in the throng that gloated over the suffering of the victim. This is something the teachers and leaders of the so-called Negroes should teach their children, the evil and the, and the elimination of their people by the blue-eyed white devils. Instead, because of their fear of the white blue-eyed devils, the so-called Negro parents teach their children just the opposite. Their doctrine is love your enemies and do not hate those who mistreat you. This is if 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 it is a white person but if it is a negro kill eliminate or beat the hell out of him and that is a result of the conditioning that is a result of the conditioning see your enemies in divine fashion see yourselves as your enemy See your enemies in divine fashion while see yourself as your enemy. It's a hell of a way to condition a group of people. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If we want freedom, justice, and equality, we must look for it amongst ourselves and our kind, not among the people who have destroyed and robbed us of even the knowledge of ourselves, themselves, of God, and our religion you can't find salvation in your enemies i want to tell you who think excuse me i want to tell you who think that you are inferior who think that you are nothing who think that the white race is superior and the wisest people that ever were you are mistaken i want to satisfy your minds my friends my brothers my sisters that you fear not that the white world will destroy us they cannot do it we have a savior with us do not tell me that we're equal we're not equal we cannot be equal how can we be equal when they own everything and we own nothing we have enough educated black women and men in this government to start a government big enough to take care of the world but that's a great question how can we be equal to a group of people who own everything we're not fighting for equality. We're fighting for crumbs. The only way we will be fighting for equality if we had equal footing. 
Because then we wouldn't have to fight for equality. We would be ultimately fighting for supremacy. Ding, 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 ding. So this part is called the true solution. Will civil rights solve the so-called Negroes problem? By no means will it or anything else except Allah solve our problem. Civil rights, according to the English dictionary, means the equal rights of a human being on a level with any other human being. These rights are limited here in America. First and foremost, the so-called Negroes need human rights, which will warrant his recognition as a human being by his slave masters. This also gives him universal rights, the same equal rights as any other human being. Will the so-called Negro enjoy the equal rights that the American white citizens enjoy, or will he continue to wait patiently for civil rights to come within 100 years from now? I am now convinced that neither a white nor a Negro government will be here 100 years from now to witness what will take place. There is nothing good coming from the white man for the so-called Negro's future. I have repeatedly warned you that there is no justice for you in this white nation. The civil rights bill was made up by white people and passed by white people. Even at this late date, there is no indication that the white man will or even desire to treat the so-called Negroes equally. This is not his nature to treat you or even his kind right. It cannot be done. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., the 1964 Nobel Peace Prize winner, would have honored himself and his people if he had refused the medal. The money could be given, could have been accepted since his people needed it, even if he did not need it himself. There are poor among his followers who really need financial help. He won, enough, he won neither peace nor justice for his people. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. was bought, was once brotherhood with white America for himself and his followers. As reported here, the Nobel Peace Prize was conferred to him in Norway. Reverend King sharply warned in St. Paul's Cathedral that a doctrine of black supremacy was as great a danger as one of white supremacy. He followed up with the words, unless men and women, uh, unless men, unless men and nations live together, they will perish together. Then came the statement according to the paper. Too many of our white brothers are only concerned with their economic problems, their social status, their political powers, and their social and their so-called way of life. Of his own people, he said, we must not seek to raise, to rise from a position of disadvantage to one of advantage, subjugating injustice, uh, substituting injustice of the one type for that of another. I've never heard of such any such talk coming from a leader's mouth in all my life. If a man is not going to rise up from a position of disadvantage, why is he preaching for the passage of civil rights, for the civil rights bill of his people? No wonder we had the privilege of going into a cathedral where, where no so-called Negro had ever stood in the pulpit. So Elijah Muhammad is saying he is ignorant, preaching a brotherhood of white people and destruction of his own people because brotherhood with the white people means the destruction of the black people. According to the Bible, he preaches from it. You should not make friends or have friendship with the wicked if you are the righteous. You should not worship the devils most certainly. The white man is the devil. His own Bible teaches him that. So clearly Elijah Muhammad disagrees with Dr. King, his actions for integration and in civil rights movement. And we can see um, from Dr. King's own admission, as I stated earlier, that a lot of moves he made did not help the whole or the longevity of black people as far as us becoming united, powerful, uplifted, empowered, or anything as a nation of people, rather than um, a lot of the moves we made basically set us up to be more individualistic and live as individuals within the white society. And to be able, to, you can be successful as individuals, but you will not be successful as a group. That's what we evolved into. And the mindset of the regular individualism, I have to get mine and I will step on and fuck over others to get mine because I deserve mine. I work hard for mine. I went to school. I did all these things. I worked hard. I did all these things. I deserve mine. I don't care about you getting yours because you didn't work as hard as me, but I deserve mine. And in that mindset, within that being championed, the whole of us is deteriorating, it's falling all around us. We're willing to give up 
the whole for a crumb as an individual. Think about that. We're willing to give up the whole for a crumb as an individual within a society that don't care about us. And then when we get our Negro wake up call, we complain, we shout, we beg, we cry, we raise awareness. Instead of doing for self, building for self, creating for self, maintaining for self, protecting self, loving self. And then there's no limit to what we can do for ourselves and how much we can grow and empower ourselves. There's no limit to that. But we continue to limit ourselves because our minds and our expectations are limited and we can't see our see, we can't see ourselves past what white people can do for us. So, hey, message to the black man in America. Link is in the description. Remember, we read from pages to 220 to 247. 220 to 247. Land of our own and qualifications, the unity of 22 million. So next week, we're reading hypocrites, disbelievers, and obedience. And that's 248 to, uh, let's see, let's see, 248 to 264, hypocrites, disbelievers, and obedience. We need not have fear for the future. 248 to 263. So, hey, that's how we're doing. Let's continue to read. If you don't have your copy of this book, you tripping. Go ahead and get your copy so we can stay on point like some Stacey Adams. And let's stay. Let's 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 continue to read. Let's continue to learn. Let's continue to grow. Let's continue to understand and employ and, and utilize what we've learned to make ourselves and our communities as a whole better. I'm not just working to make myself better just so I can be better for me. It's for the whole of us. So all of us can be better. If we're, we, it does us no good to only fight for ourselves. We have to fight for all of us. Love, I love, that's why I continue to tell you, I love you all. I love me and I love you all. And I hope you love each other and me back. So peace out. I love y'all. Catch that next video coming up.